Well, my friends, if you saw the last video that Rad Rob and I did together, you noticed that I saw this machine and I had to do a video on the Supercell. Now we're standing in front of it and I gotta know why. From Med Center to Supercell, the growth of one machine to the other, from accuracy and precision, which this one has also, to rough and rigidness that goes into this machine. Rad Rob, I love calling you that by the way. <laughs> Not just Rob, but Rad Rob. There's obviously an evolution going on in yep, this shop. Yep. The products you're making require the tolerances that Kid Amira can handle. But we just talked about a med center that's a lot smaller that you built an entire room around and now you grew to this beautiful beast here. Why the supercell investment? Uh, well, actually, you know, buying our med center was our first kind of step into Kid Amira and really understanding uh, what, a, what a truly high precision machine was like. And uh, that ended up being a game changer for us. So um, the parts we were kind of struggling with manufacturing, hitting tolerances, uh, once that solved our problem, it kind of opened our eyes like, all right, we need to start looking elsewhere for you know, something else. We need to add more capabilities to it. Um, you know, a lot more travel on this, a lot more tool capacity, a lot more torque. Um, it's just a lot more machine. Um, and so for really for us, it was, that machine is, or our, our med center, is designed to do one part number. It's only ever going to do one part number for the rest of its life um, until we add more machines and we got to up the volume. This machine uh, is more of like a, a really high precision rapid prototyping machine. So right now we're already making three part numbers on it. We only had it operational for a few weeks and we're already running the pallets through the night and everything. Pretty easy to set up. Um, and now it's just kind of tooling it up. It's got 230 tools on it. Uh, so we've only got 32 tools in there right now. We're barely scratching the surface of this thing. So um, the goal for this is to eventually tool this entire thing up, one all the way to 230. Um, we're using the power grip. We're, we pretty much use exclusively power grip in this machine as well, um, along with the fifth axis work holding that we're using to hold the material down. And um, it'll always be just sort of whatever part we need to make, we need to do it quickly, we need to do it accurately, this machine's gonna do it. Um, and then as we're done prototyping, if we need volume, we just load up the pallets and let it run through the night. So um, this machine has sort of opened up our, uh, our efficiency even further than what the med center did. So it's kind of a, you know, uh, we, now we've got two really high quality machines and I think we'll have more in the future as well. Well, I have a two part follow up question. I'll, I'll introduce both of those questions to you, but we'll only go over one first, and then okay. we'll, we'll go to the other one second. The first part is you mentioned the med center was kind of the evolution of your shop. It allowed Correct. you to do more, understanding what a highly accurate machine is. So I'm gonna ask you about talking with the audience about making that type of an investment and what it takes in order to understand, okay, I'm going from one level of machine to another machine. The next thing I wanna talk about is with the evolution of this supercell is what are you most excited about, which we're gonna oh, get okay. into that in just a minute. Okay. But when we're talking about taking a shop from Let's say that level where a lot of us are competing for the same parts because any machine can do it that's out there, right? And right, you move into right. a world where only specific high quality machines can start making those parts. How do you get the confidence and courage when you were making the decision to go with Kid Amira to take that step into that world? Uh, you know, to be honest, um, when I was, when I spent a lot of time doing, looking into this, uh, we actually, I, I was first introduced to Kid Amira at IMTS back in 2022 um, and I went, to that show specifically with the intention of buying a machine. We didn't know what we were buying. We just knew we needed something that was more accurate than what we currently had. Um, what a fun playground. Yeah, I, I, tell me about it. And going to the uh, Kitamora booth and talking about the Med Center, you know, it's kind of like talking to them and, and you know, you talk to their applications guys and really kind of pick their brain on what's this machine truly capable of. And, um, and then at that point, it's kind of throwing caution to the wind and just hoping it's gonna do what they say it can do, you know? Um, and has it? It has, it has. And, and like we talked about too, there, it's more than just the machine though. It's you know, the tooling that we're using, the work holding that we're using. It's kind of the comprehensive package of a manufacturing cell, if you will, um, to handle that kind of precision. So uh, that med center really kind of answered that question for me. And so now we're kind of going forward looking at uh, what else can we do? What else does Kitamore offer that can solve some of our, our needs? Yeah, and, and I travel around a lot, just like you know, and I get to see similar evolutions to what you just described. It's, it's putting your foot in the water saying, is what you're telling me real? And when it becomes right. a reality, then you go, okay, what else can I do with this, right, right? Right, right? So here we are now, we're a few weeks to a few months in. You've already told me before we hit record on these cameras and you were like, Tony, 
I'm, it's like a toy for me. Yeah, I'm, over, yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a kid, I'm your nerd at the yeah, moment, I, right? I love this thing. Yeah, yeah you, you were telling me yeah. this. So what are you most excited about on the potentials of what this machine can bring you? Uh, you know, I'm just really kind of excited to see where we go with it. Um, one of the big things too, it, it's sort of an intangible is, it's going to help make our lives easier on manu you know, manufacturing the parts, machining the parts become a little bit easier. Um, there, there's a lot to it uh, up front, but on top of it, it's also what our engineers can now design that we can machine easily. So it kind of, uh, it, it's sort of twofold, you know, it, it allows us to machine easier, but it also allows us to sort of open up our, uh, you know, capabilities. So engineers can design things with tighter tolerances, and they do, they love doing that. <laughs> um, so everything gets tighter, everything gets more accurate, surface finishes get better. Um, you know, it just sort of allows us to sort of progress as a company and that's what we're all about, you know, developing cutting edge technology and sort of being at the forefront of where we're headed. So, What I want to talk about now is a topic that you and I are passionate about and you have a shop in Montana as well, am I correct? Correct. We do have a manufacturing facility. You have a manufacturing facility in Montana. I've been to Montana before and a conversation I had there was, how do you find machinists? And the response was, well, it's difficult. Right. Machining isn't typically what we have up here. We like to be outdoors. We like to go hiking. I was actually doing a split boarding video at that time. So they were doing the <laughs> snowboarding, split boarding. But having engineers there was sometimes a difficult thing. So they were doing engineering and other parts and sending it there. Now, I will bring this full circle for both the audience and yourself in just a second. And what I want to bring up is, with a machine like Kitamura, do you find there's value in the machine's quality allowing sometimes an operator that's not quite as, let's say, seasoned as some of the other folks that are out there right now because some machines out there you got to tinker with you got to tweak right. you got to make sure the parts run you can press go on this machine and that parts coming out good do you find also in your experience when running a machine like this that your operators sure they need to be skilled we want them to be right, skilled right. but the parts are coming off exactly as they're programmed oh yeah 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 I mean uh, especially on this machine the, the parts we're making on this right now the tolerancing isn't as tight as what we're making on the med center so that makes it a little bit easier as well um, but like I said, you know, we, I've done a lot of work on the back end of templating for programming and fusion that we use, that's what I use for programming. Um, posting out through Camplete, verifying through that that everything is, uh, I program through fusion, uh, post out through Camplete, and then uh, verifying through Camplete, make sure there's no crashes, anything like that, putting it in the machine and it, it's just done exactly what I've expected it to do. So it's, it's worked out really well and um, I've trained a couple guys in this shop that come from other controllers, they're not quite familiar with this, and the learning curve is pretty quick. They pick it up pretty fast. I mean, I got a lot of good guys here. These, these guys are rock stars. Um, but it's, you know, it's, we haven't had any problems with that. So it's been good sort of cross-training these guys on different controllers, different machines, different processes, um, different M codes here and there, and, you know, but it's not too bad. So it's been working out pretty well for us. You and I are talking right now in a very intimate situation here in this machine shop. And I say that for a reason, because we're going to step away and take a bird's eye view real quick for all the viewers out there and just say, when it comes to all the reshoring that we're talking about right now, when it comes to making more parts and competing in a price effective way across the entire globe, it's machines like this kit of mirror that allow us to do that. Would you agree I would. that we're able to run nights, weekends, keep prices lower, be more efficient, less scrap that goes along with Oh yeah, absolutely. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, I would. I would definitely agree with that. Um, in fact, I mean, we've, we've had that on our previous machines that we're making these parts on that can't quite hold the tolerance as well. Um, you have a lot more fallout with, than with this machine. This machine, once it was dialed in, I haven't made a scrap part yet with it. So it's been, and knock on wood, I haven't broken any tools either. You know, I, I haven't built, uh, I haven't built the tool breakage detection into the program yet, so we're just kind of sending it, hopefully, hoping for the best in the morning. Um, I've, I've set a security camera up above the machine so I can watch it from home. From make home. Sure, yeah, make sure nothing's going on with it. If I need to, I'll come back in here and sort it out so we don't lose any downtime. But, um, you know, other than that, it's been, it's been awesome for us. So I've been really happy. Well, Rob, your Instagram handle is perfect. This is Rad Rob, in case you want to check him out on Instagram as well. <laughs> Rob, right. thank you so much for thank your time you. today. This is the Supercell. This is Kid Amira. We appreciate you joining us today. You know, time is the one thing that Rob and I cannot manufacture more of. So if you spent it with us today, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.